All right, let's get to sexual follies. I'm sorry. I always love that. I, I have to start by just playing this piece that was put up on the Daily Wire. because I, I, made, I did a, an opening about this a while back, uh, about marrying yourself. This is a feminist movement where, you know, you don't, ha you don't have to get married to another person. You simply marry yourself. And I just want you to hear these vows. I hope you can hear them. Let's, let's play it. I love the way you I love how you have compassion and empathy for others. I love how you have compassion and empathy for others. She's talking into a mirror, and the person, whoever it is who is administering the marriage to herself, says, re repeat after me, I love how you have compassion and empathy for others. But there are no others. It's just her. She's talking to herself. So it, it, here is the thing that really gets me about this. I was talking yesterday how it's odd that the people who believe in Darwin look backwards to some silly, treacly idea of the noble savage, and the people who believe in Adam and Eve look forward to you know a, a life with God and a, a return to our uh, forgiven status with God. It is also a very strange thing that the people who emphasize sex, they want to ban everything except for sex. They want to ban ideas. They want to ban speech. They want to ban, you know, uh, the conservative movement as a whole. They want to ban jokes from conservatives, everything they want to ban. But, they, but as long as it's sex, whatever the sex is, you know, that they want to, that they support. But why is it they're the ones who end up marrying themselves? Why is it they're the ones who end up hating everything about sexuality except the actual act. They hate everything. Here is, here is this thing, Mo, uh, this new study, right? A new study suggests the real problem in children's lives. It's not that they don't have fathers. It's not that the uh, culture around them is crap. It's not that they can get porn on a handheld device. That's not the problem. The real problem is that they have sexual identities. They have gender identities, okay? A new study suggests that no matter where children live, real talk about relationships, identity, and sexuality should start even earlier. Why? To minimize the negative impacts of gender roles. That is the problem in children's life. More than biology, this is uh, from CNN, I think. More than biology, family, friends, and society uh, influence impressions of what it means to be a boy or a girl, placing rigid gender expectations on children from a young age. In recent years, a growing body of research has focused on health inequities that result from enforced gender norms in children. This study, published Wednesday in the Journal of Adolescent Health, contributes a global perspective to this issue. The key finding... Whether a child is in Baltimore, Beijing, or New Delhi, the onset of adolescence triggers a common set of rigidly enforced gender expectations associated with increased lifelong risks of mental and physical health problems. Because you are a boy or a girl and expected to act more like a boy if you're a boy than a girl and more like a girl like a girl, that's your problem. Adolescent health risks are shaped. This is a theoretical expert says adolescent health risks are shaped by behaviors rooted in gender roles that can be well established in kids by the time they're 10 or 11 years old. Here's what it says. Here's the myth. Here's the problem that children have when they're taught these gender roles. The study calls it the hegemonic myth. The perception that men are the dominant sex, strong and independent, while women need to be protected. This idea is starts in early childhood, reinforced by schools, parents, and media. Interviews with children and their guardians reveal that the onset of puberty triggers increased reinforcement of pressure to conform to hegemonic sex-typed identities and roles. While boys, men described having the freedom to come and go as they please to pursue education and other opportunities, girls found their mobility and access to education restricted the study notes. As they enter adolescence, silence and modesty are instilled as desirable values. Ooh, modesty. You don't want that. As girls are pressed to behave in a modest fashion, fashion this phenomenon leads to numerous cascading cultural perceptions. 
So let's think about this, because I do know that most mothers are very careful to tell their daughters to be careful, right? To be careful of men, you know, don't go downstairs with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> don't go in, don't go into the basement with Harvey Weinstein. And uh, Siv and Lauren Siv talked about the fact that when she went downstairs, her friend said to her, if you're not back in 10 minutes, I'm coming to find you. That is good sense, right? So what they're saying is the problem here is that men are being taught to protect women because they're strong and women are being told that they need to be protected because they're weak and this is being influenced. What do you think happens? What do you think happens if you take that away? What do you see? This is the this is the myth, the mythology, this mythology, and it plays into what we were talking about yesterday, the mythology of the uh, noble savage, right? The myth is, is if you take away all this society stuff, all this evil civilizational stuff, then we are golden. We are perfect. We are beautiful. We're so wonderful. All you have to do, I mean, if you're a Darwinist, if you believe in Darwin, you should know that's not true. You look at the gorillas, they beat the crap out of their women. <laughs> you know, you look at them, they behave, they behave like people behave when you take away civilization. It is civilization that we build with our spirits and our minds and our hearts and with our, with our Bible in hand and with our ideas, our traditions behind us that we're standing on top of. That is what makes people decent. When you get rid of gender roles, when you get gen rid of gender roles, you don't reach this golden equality. You don't come into this golden equality where we're all the same. All you're left with is Harvey Weinstein and the men who are too weak to stand up against him. That's what you're left with. Because if you take away this idea that men with their superior strength, with their superior size, are there to protect women, then all you're left with is the men who will use that size to abuse women and the men who are too weak and, and too cowed to protect them. When you sit and think about that love, I mean, she's a lovely girl. Lauren Sivan, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, she, she's a lovely girl. When you think about her cornered by this gigantic beast of a guy while he does what he does, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure, I know when I'm, I know that I'm talking to guys, I know that every single one of you is having the same fantasy of laying that sucker out. I mean, that is what guys, that is what normal guys think about when they hear about women being abused. You have the fantasy of laying that guy flat, right? And you want to get rid of that. You want to train that out of men. That's not societal. That is built in. That is built in. We are built to protect our mates. You want to get rid of that. All you're left with is Harvey Weinstein, and that's it. You will have a world of Harvey Weinsteins and the women cornered by them and abused. Sexual Follies, play that thing again. <laughs> All right, tomorrow is the mailbag. Yeah. So just think, just think, this is the last day that you'll have any problems. This is the last day when you will be living this miserable, depressing life that you're living tomorrow. You will, I will answer your questions and all will be well and all manner of things will be well. I'm Andrew Clavin. This is The Andrew Clavin Show. We'll see you then.